thank you again um, Professor Jennifer Poo for that wonderful introduction. Um, again, my name is Zong Li. I'm a fourth year of IMSO Studies in Economic Combined Major. Uh, for this afternoon's presentation, I'm going to present on the impact of Southeast Asian immigrants on the California's economy. So before, uh, to start off the presentation, I would like to uh, discuss the three main motivations behind my research um, paper. And some of these motivations, Professor Jennifer Fu has already touched upon, but I will elaborate a little bit more on it. So uh, for the first uh, motivation that I really um, have on me is um, while I was doing my literature review and reading what has been done within my topic, I realized that not a lot of discussion specifically for Southeast Asian immigrants were discussed in the um, overall broader um, context of it. So for me, I feel like it's a super important um, topic to look into, not just immigration policy, but specifically for immigration as um, a group to determine what are the impact individually for them. Um, and because of that, I decided to choose specifically for Southeast Asian immigrants. In addition to that too, um, I mean, I myself identify as Southeast Asian um, immigrants. I was born in Thailand um, in 1990, 1990 um, and then I migrated over here with my family in 1992. So I mean, I have a connection with the region. Um, and Thailand is going to be one of the countries that I'm going to study. And also along with that too, um, in the US, uh, we hear a lot of, uh, in the media especially, we hear a lot of uh, general public view that immigrants are negative, either negatively impact um, wages in California or wages in the United States, or also taking away jobs from native workers, which I think it's, um, an important um, controversial topic to study and to see what is the real impact and not just an assumption that we make. Um, and also with that, a study that uh, a study by Slife and Slafter um, indicated that 50 percent of the uh, 50 percent of American um, across the nation um, agree or want a reduction in immigrants admitted to the United States, which I think it's a pretty far and astounding percentage because 50% is a lot. And if you think about it, the United States is made of, of multiple immigrants, immigrants, not just from um, Europe and Asia, but uh, other countries too. So I feel like it's a very high number. So with those three um, big uh, motivations behind my research paper, I decided to, again, do my research paper on Southeast Asian immigrants' impact. And for my research paper, um, my research question is, how does Southeast Asian impact California's economy? And at first glance, it might be a super, super easy and simplified question to look at. But when I were doing, um, when I was going through this process with Professor Jennifer Fu, you, um, it's a really complex question to look at. Um, so even though it's simple, it's, uh, it's tough and um, hard. But, um, at the end, I'm able to do it. Um, so with that, uh, I'll go into my definition of Southeast Asian immigrants. So from the slide, um, you can see that um, I identify Southeast Asian as the country um, in the figure. Um, for my definition of Southeast Asian immigrants, I got the definition from the United States no, the United Nations Statistic Division, um, and then again, they define Southeast Asian as the um, country list um, on the slide. Uh, for immigrants, I use the definition from my data, which is from the RAD California um, Corporation, and they define um, immigrants as um, people who were born in different countries. So adding those two definitions together for my paper, I, I define Southeast Asian immigrants as um, people who are born in these country I listed on the slide and were immigrants to the United States. So um, yes, and for I define California with I define California um, for metropolitan cities. So I use metropolitan cities that I list above in the slide to define California as the whole states. And I know that um, in California, there's multiple cities, but just based on the data that I have so far, these are the um, cities that allow me to look at California. So just take a quick look at the country of the city because I know it's a lot. Um, so I'll change the slide in a bit. So hopefully you guys will have a clear idea which cities I'm discussing when I say California. Okay. 
So for California's economies, um, I use wage and employment to define California's economy. So these are the two factors that I'm looking into when I discuss or mention California's economy. So uh, with that said, uh, I'll go into my hypothesis. And for my hypothesis for my research is, as Southeast Asian immigrant workers specialize in producing a good, they help enhance California's economies through increases uh, wage wages and employment. So how do I um, develop my research? Um, or how do I dev develop my research um, hypothesis? Uh, I use three or four main um, economic theories that help me define and develop my research question or in hypothesis, I'm sorry. Uh, the first one is absolute advantage. The second one is opportunity cost. The third one is comparative advantage. And lastly, uh, specialization. And for the next couple of slides, I'll go more in depth of what these um, definition means in economic and how do I generate that to my hypothesis. So first of all, uh, absolute advantage is defined as um, giving a specific amount of resource or time to work. Um, a worker who produces the most goods or the most goods um, has the absolute advantage. So on the table below, it provides a visual um, definition of it. Uh, the table is represent a hypothetical numbers that I generate just to give an idea of what the definition is. So from the table, um, if you look, worker A uh, can produce 1,300 apple. If, and worker, if worker A only focus on producing apple within that hour frame, uh, worker A can produce 1,300. In addition to that, if worker A only produces apple in that hour frame, worker A can also produce um, 1,600 apples. And that also applies to worker B, too. So worker B only produces um, apples in that hour frame. Um, worker B can produce 1,100 and 1,200 for oranges. So just based on this, um, hypothetical number that I generate, you can see that worker A has the absolute advantage if worker A only produces apples or orange in that hour frames. Um, and another question that it's um, important to address is even though worker A can produce both good, um, it's not very, or it's not efficient for worker A to produce um, both goods within that hour frame because if worker A does produce those goods, um, the level of productivity productivity will um, be cut in half or be less than half. So that's why you look for um, opportunity costs within this um, larger discussion. And um, so what is opportunity cost? Um, opportunity cost, as defined by Kuhlman and Will, who are well-known economists in the field, as opportunity cost is what you must give up in order to get an item you want. So that means to my research, what does um, worker A or worker B has to give up apples to produce orange, or what did they have to give up an orange to produce an apple? So that's the definition of opportunity cost. So to determine the opportunity cost for my hypothetical uh, number is if worker A uh, has to give up, um, has to, if worker A wants to produce an apple, how much um, oranges does worker A has to give up? Uh, so to determine that, you will look at, you will uh, divide 1,600, which is a total amount of oranges, by 1,300. And that will give you the number of opportunity costs, which is 1 1.2. And similarly, to determine how much apple worker A has to give up to produce one more oranges, worker A has, um, I divide 1,300 by 1,600, with, which gives me 0 0.8. So again, I also do the same calculation to worker B, and that gives me um, 1.0 of an orange worker B has to give up to produce an apple and 0.9 of an apple worker B has to give it to produce oranges. So just based on these, uh, on the table again, just based on this, you can tell that um, worker A has the comparative advantage in producing oranges because 0.8 is less than 0 0.9, and worker B has the comparative advantage, or have the opportunity cost in producing um, uh, apple, which is 0.1, uh, 1.0 is less than 1.2.
So the next, the next slide just uh, readjusts what I just said before. So with the lower opportunity cost, um, I can say that Work A has a lower opportunity cost in producing oranges, uh, and Work A should specialize in producing um, oranges. And again, since Work A has a lower opportunity cost in producing apples, Work B should specialize in producing um, apples. So. As a result of they specializing in this productive or this product, uh, they will enhance productivity of those good overall to increase to increase the economy. And then I mean, going through all this definition and term, y'all might um, question here: Why does this relate to my research paper? And uh, to address this question is, I use this as indicated by these theories, these theories indicate that if workers such as um, service agent immigrant or native workers specialize, they can um, help increase productivity overall. So because of that, I can hypothesize within my paper saying that if worker within, if service agent immigrants come into the workforce, they will increase um, productivities and as a result, increase wage and employment. And as a result of that, um, employment, in, uh, Econ the economy increase. So that's how I generate my hypothesis. Uh, so next is um, I will discuss my data that I used to test my hypothesis. So to kind of reiterate what, uh, what I, why I use the data and why I collect these specific data is for my specific research, I'm looking at service agent population, total population, wage, and employment um, as a variable to test my hypothesis. And because of that, I gathered the data from, again, RAD California statistic. Um, within that, I gathered the total population of service agent um, immigrants and the population overall. And I also gather the average, average income per person in the metropolitan cities. And with that, I also gather the total number of employees in these metropolitan cities. So what uh, analysis tool did I use? I use a sophisticated analysis tool in economic called difference in difference, um, even though it's um, the name is uh, very important because uh, it defines how I even conduct my uh, research. So um, the difference in different methods allow me to isolate other factors that might impact wages and employment. And in addition to that too, it allow me to look specifically at my research question at how does service agent again impact California's economy? So how does um, the difference in different methods allow me to look specifically at service agents impact on um, California's economy? Um, first of all, it allow me to calculate the difference in years from 1990 to 2000 in both low and high cities of immigrants. And the second difference is it allowed me to tell that because of these um, lows and high difference, um, immigrants um, help increase California's economy through the city, through high or low cities. So again, this analysis allowed me to look specifically for my, uh, in my research um, and for my hypothesis. So um, I, I mentioned that um, I separated them into low and high categories of cities. So this slide represents how I conduct that. Um, so before I uh, organize it, I look at the total shares of population within the cities. And the reason why I look at the total shares of population and not the actual size of um, the service agent um, immigrant within the city is depending on the city, such as LA, which is super um, huge and big, they might just have a larger population of service agent in it. So with that, if I don't um, consider that, I might, it might mislead my calculation or my organizations of my paper. So that that's why I look specifically at the total shares of sorry agent within the population. So to do that, I will um, divide uh, the total service agent immigrants over the total population to determine the ratio of the shares. So after I determine the ratio, I organize it through low through the medium, and um, after I organize it, I uh, find the average wage and employment of them.